Hey, young friends, Dr. Bill here. I certainly hope that you're having a great week, and I hope that you're doing well and staying healthy and warm. Well, today I'm back with another lesson on Job from our series of big names in the Bible. And today we're going to jump ahead to near the end of the story. You may recall that uh, from one of our previous lessons, I talked about how the one thing Job wanted was to have a meeting with God. Job was so sure that he was innocent that he wanted to have a conversation with God. He wanted to meet God face to face and argue his case, telling God that the suffering he experienced was all wrong and that it was not justified. Well, near the end of the book, Job gets his wish. God shows up, and when God starts talking, well, God talks for a long time, a long time, and Job is reduced to silence. In the final chapter of the book, Job, after God has spoken all of these things that he says, Job finally responds and says, God, uh, there's just so much about you that I did not know. I have said things that I didn't even understand at the time. You are so much bigger than I ever dreamed or imagined. In other words, Job, in his meeting with God, was humbled. He was reminded that he himself was very, very small, and God was very, very large. That's, important. That's an important thing for us to remember in our walk with God. We, we are called to be humble. Now, the root for the word humble simply means earth. We remember that we are dust, that no matter how many years we're allotted on this planet, our time here is very, very short. God, however, is eternal. God has no beginning and no end. And so in the grand scheme of things, God really is very, very big, and we are very, very small. We're called to remember all of that, and that's why we speak of the importance of being humble. Now, Job says, he says he has spoken of things that he did not know or understand. Within the church, we have generally talked about three ways we can come to know and understand God. The first is through Scripture, through the Bible. The Bible contains stories from our forebears in faith and how they encountered God, how they experienced God. The Bible also contains writings of all different kinds that people, uh, in which people expressed how they understood God or where they were in their walk with God. And so one of the ways we can begin to understand God is to give ourselves to the study of Scripture, to the Bible itself. And through the Bible, we come to understand how others met and experienced and knew God, and we can draw lines of connection between their experience and our own. We can say, you know, I'm like this character, or I'm like that character, and that's how I have experienced God. The second way we have tried to talk about knowing God is through tradition. Tradition is a fancy word simply for the things that are handed down from one generation to the next. The church has always handed down tradition. We have learned from our forebears, and we have taken those lessons to heart, and we have tried to pass them on uh, to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and our great-great-grandchildren. 
In other words, when we rely on tradition, we're saying, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to start all over. Somebody has walked this way ahead of us, and maybe we can learn something by paying attention to what the church has taught or what the church has had to say about this or that over the centuries. And then the final way we understand and know God is through our own experience. God comes to us in as unique and individual ways as we are unique individuals. God doesn't do a one-size-fits-all kind of approach to human beings. God speaks to us in language we understand, and God comes to us in ways that we can uh, recognize. His, uh, God's approach is tailor-made to the individual. And so within church, you might hear some of us saying, this is how I met God, or this is the way in which God worked in my life. That's our testimony. That's our story. And uh, others may say, well, I haven't experienced God like that. Here's my story. But always we're talking about the same God and the ways in which God worked in our lives. So these three ways of knowing and understanding God, Scripture, tradition, experience, very, very important. But it's also important to remember that despite the wealth of knowledge and understanding we have in Scripture, with, uh, scripture, tradition, and experience. We still don't know everything about God. God is so much bigger and so much grander and larger than we ever dared to imagine. And so it's always appropriate for us to take Job's posture. It's always appropriate for us to respond to God this way, to say, God, you are so very, very large, and I am so very, very small. There have been times, God, when I have spoken, and I just didn't know what I was saying. There were times that I spoke of you, and I was really way off base. I had no clue what the truth really was. It's always good in our walk for, with God for us to remember that we are of the dust of the earth. We are human. We are passing. God is eternal. And God is very, very big. Well, thank you for joining me today. As always, if you have any questions about anything I've said, please give me a phone call or send me an email any way you want. I'd be happy to talk with you anytime that's convenient for you. And so in the meantime, I wish you well. I hope you have a great rest of the week. And I certainly hope that the day will come when we can see each other in person again. You take care and God bless. Bye-bye.